Okay. Uh, good morning and welcome to Mega Asia webinar. I am Michael Banghilista from Philippines. Today our topic is how to test recloser using ERTS to be presented by Bernard. Next slide, Bern. Bernard is our Mega East Asia applications engineer for power protection segment. He obtained his bachelor's degree from Bicol University, a state-owned university in the Philippines, and became registered electrical engineer in 2012. He has over 12 years of experience in operations and maintenance, substation asset testing, such as protective relays, circuit breakers, instrument transformers, and power transformers. His key role is applications of mega protection relay segments specialized on IEC 61850, testing solution. At the end of the webinar, please help us fill in a survey which you can see on the right hand side. We will be sending the presentation materials to those completed the survey. Attendees will be able to download an attendance certificate after they have finished the webinar and completed the survey. A recording of this webinar will be sent to you in two days time after the webinar. So without further delay, Let's start now. Thank you for joining us today. Bert? So, good morning uh, or good afternoon to everyone. So, my name is Bernardo Apuya and I am the East Asia Application Engineer. So, our webinar today is about uh, how to test recloser using our ERTS or the Electronic Recloser Test Simulator. So here's the list of uh, topics that we are going to cover today. So line recloser review, applications, uh, test methods, and uh, using ERTS to test reclosers. So both transmission and distribution segments uh, implement auto reclosing scheme, but uh, line reclosers are more commonly used in the distribution level. We will focus on uh, recloser that are used in distribution level. So we'll start with uh, line reclosers review. What are these line reclosers? So line recloser or just reclosers are line circuit breakers that are mounted on uh, distribution poles and are typically used on long distribution feeders. Their function is to isolate, isolate a section of a feeder during a fault or overload conditions. Like circuit breakers, the closers have controllers. Now in the form of uh, microprocessor-based relays that give the trip and close signals automatically. Trip time can be programmed to be instantaneous, definite time, or uh, use inverse time curves. The dead time or open time and number of reclosings or shots can be also set. When this, uh, when this is exhausted, the closer goes to a lockout state. So in this feature, the line, this uh, yellow one, is connected or disconnected by the recloser unit. The recloser unit is connected to uh, a control uh, in the controller here, which is enclosed by the uh, metal cabinet. So inside the, uh, the recloser unit are the main contacts, CT and uh, VT. So inside the controller cabinet are the relay and the battery. So to simplify the uh, basic operation of the closer, we have an example here, a circuit with a source uh, and a load connected to the breaker here. This breaker has a controller the 
controller serves as the brain of the breaker and gives uh, decision when the trip when to trip the breaker this link uh, here uh, sends information of current and voltage on the line and the breaker status so whether it is open or closed let's say this breaker controller is programmed to uh, perform a uh, four, sh uh, four shots lockout here the line uh, here the line is uh, normal and the breaker is closed represented by the red color the current and voltage on the line are monitored by the instrument transformer now what will happen if a fault occurs on the line monitored by this controller uh, let's put a permanent fault here for example so for understanding purposes we'll use this uh, permanent fault to see what what a poor shot uh, lockout is what happens uh, when there's a fault the source supplies uh, the fault and the load and the current goes up and the voltage uh, goes down these changes will uh, be detected by the controller let's say that in this controller there's a protection function that uh, monitors high current magnitude the controller will send the trip to the circuit breaker as soon as this condition is met since we have another function in this uh, controller which is the auto close or in ANSI device number uh, number 79 will kick in after some uh, time delay and will close the breaker again this will be the first shot at this moment the controller uh, doesn't know yet what type of fault is so after the controller sends a reclose command the breaker closes after the again the source uh, will supply the fault and the load and the same changes will be detected by the controller it will send the trip command to open the breaker the, the auto reclose function from the controller sends the signal after the time delay so this will be the second shot the time delay here is maybe longer hoping that the fault is already gone the breaker is closed again and is still the current uh, is high because of the fault the controller issues an open command to the breaker and the reclose is uh, repeated again to see if the current flows back to normal so this will be the third shot again since the fault remains the breaker will uh, trip and after some uh, time delay, we'll try another shot for the last time to see whether the fault is already clear. So this will be the fourth shot. This time, we already know that the fault is still there. The breaker will trip. Now the controller will stop sending the reclose command to the breaker. At this point, the fault is there. Uh, the fault is still there, and uh, actions might might be must be taken to find out what's the cause and if necessary a correction of repair or a correction or repair must be uh, carried out so mode of operation can be three pole or single pole in three pole mode the main contacts are closed or opened in simultaneously. Usually these are used along the main line when, when you have the three phase conductors, uh, single fold closers on the other hand are used on the latter lines. The closers are designed with uh, both hydraulic and electronic controls. Hydraulically controlled the closers uh, sense over currents by means of uh, series strip coil connected in series with the line when current exceeds the trip rating of the coil 
a plunger is drawn into the coil, which causes the uh, recloser contacts to open. Electronically controlled uh, reclosers are both flexible and accurate. Accurate than hydraulically controlled recloser, but are also more expensive. The electronic control can be uh, easily adjusted to change the time current tripping characteristic, minimum trip settings, and the closing sequence of the recloser. The electronic uh, control also uh, provides a wide range of accessory enhancement to meet the specific needs of uh, the user. And also, reclosers are designed to use either uh, oil or vacuum as the interacting medium. In oil, in oil uh, reclosers, the same oil is used for for both arc interruption and uh, basic insulation. Vacuum reclosers uh, use either oil or air as the uh, basic insulation medium. So let's have a review of the process of battery closing. So let's take a look what happened uh, one more time. The window, uh, the wind, the wind blows uh, the three branch towards the feeder conductors, uh, which causes a line to ground fault. So the three branch uh, towards the feeder conductors, uh, which causes the line to ground fault. Uh, the relay senses the fault and trips the breaker. So the wind passes and the branch is cleared from the conductors. Uh, after a certain time delay that, will, uh, that we call the dead time, the relay issues close command to the breaker and uh, customer power is restored. So why do electric utilities implement uh, automatic reclosing? So first is because more than 90% uh, of the faults are transient. Transient faults can either be caused by lightning or foreign objects touching the conductors. 80% of the time, the fault is cleared on the first tripping. This yields to a successful first outer closing. Some foreign objects like uh, three branches, that fall on the conductors may take additional time under uh, until they get burned away. This may happen after second or third shot uh, break, breaker tripping. So second is uh, re reliability indicators uh, improvement. Utilities have this, uh, what we call Real reliability indicators. We have uh, MIFI, SIFI, SID, and uh, KID, and others. They features the uh, uh, they measure the uh, overall quality of service provided by the distribution company. Every year, these companies have uh, targets to meet. If they achieve the targets, the utilities get rewarded. If they fail, they are penalized. When auto reclosing is implemented in uh, radial feeders, the duration of uh, power outage is significantly reduced. If there is a power interruption and the first reclosing delay is less than uh, five minutes, the power interruption will be classified as MIFI, MIFI event instead of uh, site event. And MIFI targets uh, figures are usually more relaxed than the SIFI target. In addition, there will be no effect on the SIDI and the uh, ID performance. So these are the reference for these uh, reliability indicators. So just read on this on some details with this IEEE 1366 uh, edition, uh, 2012 edition.
So applications of uh, reclosers are used for uh, segmentation, uh, as main feeder protection for load monitoring, and as uh, transfer and uh, tie switches. So let's go over them uh, one by one. So segmentation. If there's a fault at the lateral line, the breaker trips and the whole feeder is uh, loses the power. So if you add a recloser in the main line and the same fault occurs, only a portion of the main line and the lateral line loses power. This is beneficial to the utility in terms of uh, rely reliability indicators and uh, energy sales. So main feeder protection. Since the combination of a liner closer and its controller is cheaper than the circuit breaker plus a separate relay, the closers are sometimes used for the required continuous current or available fault is very uh, is not very high. So because some uh, or most reclosers uh, have smaller rating than uh, circuit breakers. So load monitoring. Since line reclosers are controlled and monitored through SCADA, the load of a specific portion of the line can be observed. So transfer switch. If a fault occurs in the portion of feeder one, circuit breaker one will trip and whole feeder one will be uh, de-energized. The closer one will uh, open in preparation for load shifting. And the recloser two will be used uh, will be closed, energizing the end portion of the feeder one. So this can be done manually or automatically in a smart or uh, self-healing grid. So why not uh, use a load break switch in place of uh, the closer three? So okay, so we replace the closer three with a load break switch. When the utility personnel perform a corrective action on the uh, affected portion of feeder one, and another fault at the same uh, at the end portion of uh, feeder one happens, the closer two will trip the energizing uh, end portion of feeder two and uh, feeder one. So let's run the same uh, scenario using a recloser instead of a load break switch. Repair is performed uh, quickly and uh, photo course. Now, instead of recloser to tripping, it will only be recloser three. Uh, through this, uh, the distribution company minimizes the affected customers by isolating the only uh, faulted line. So, uh, tie switch. Another advantage of uh, line leak crossers is that some of them have uh, voltage transformers on both sides that can be used to check synchronism. Suppose uh, circuit breaker one is under preventive maintenance. Our trick uh, can be used to check synchronism between uh, feeder one and feeder two uh, prior to tying the uh, two together. So now uh, we're going to the test methods of the uh, auto recloser. 
So we're not referring to the electrical test done on the recloser like insulation, contact resistance, uh, ratio test, etc. Our focus is on the controller and the functionality of the uh, recloser. The first method is through primary injection. When injecting primary current, both the recloser and controller are tested. This is, a, this is an advantage when uh, time is critical. So number two, it is also a disadvantage since uh, you cannot test the controller alone. You want to perform a more thorough timing test to verify coordination with upstream for downstream protection. You subject the recloser unit to more mechanical uh, stress. So the built-in CT and VT can be verified. So this is an advantage. If you want to inject uh, high current magnitude, so this is this is this is this advantage. If you want to inject higher current magnitude, a heavier test equipment is required. Similarly, if you want to verify coordination with uh, upstream or downstream protection, you may need to be uh, able to inject higher current magnitudes. So unless uh, you have a three-phase primary current injection equipment, you can only test uh, single phase or the ground element and face-to-face uh, -face elements. So depending on the relay settings and the test equipment, most of the time, the instantaneous element cannot be tested. So only the basic protection elements can be tested. So secondary, the other way to test is through secondary injection. Both the controller and the recloser unit functional test can be performed at the same time for uh, more detailed uh, test. The recloser unit can be isolated so as not to subject it to more uh, open and close operations. CT and BT cannot be verified. Test equipment is lighter compared to primary injection. All protection functions can be simulated. So this includes GPS-aided tests in a smart or self-healing grid. So now we'll go on to using the ARTS to uh, test reclosers. So here, you can see that uh, the ERTS serves as the interface between uh, secondary relay test system and the uh, recloser. So in this case, we use the SMRT. So other secondary test system can also be used. The ERTS uh, is used to test both the functional operation of the recloser unit and the uh, controller unit simultaneously through secondary voltage and or current injection. If desired, the recloser unit can be uh, disconnected and more thorough uh, tests of the controller can be performed. Now, since ERTS has a fixed number of uh, pin types, some other some other recloser manufacturer that has more than a number of pins may require an adapter to be able to test using our ERTS. In this case, the test engineer may ask support from the recloser uh, manufacturer to provide the needed adapter. So the option to create and customize your own adapter is also possible if the information for pin allocation is available. So let's take a closer look on the uh, ERTS. The three different multi-pin connectors provide uh, flexibility in the different types of uh, reclosers that are commonly found in the market to uh, simulate and test. We have the 19-pin connector. and 32 pin connector and the last one the 14 pin connector so the mega relay test units uh, provide the individual test currents and uh, voltage through the interface unit and monitor the individual trip and reclose uh, circuits 
from the uh, simulator. Uh, let's check on the next slide on uh, how to connect the uh, mega relay uh, test system or the SMRT. So here, as you can see here, we connected the current for testing the uh, uh, overcurrent functions. And we have connected here the um, binary output of the SMRT going to the 32 pin of the uh, ERTS. Binary output, uh, 32 pin of art, uh, ERTS. So the next one here is the, uh, the closer connections. So this connection here uh, is connected to the, uh, the closer unit. So now, so we need to use the uh, RTMS software and uh, configure the uh, state sequences or the state sequence uh, for testing the uh, auto recloser. So here we have a table to uh, summarize the uh, configuration of uh, each state. So we have the state one uh, set for a free fold. So here is the weight condition, uh, the time. So these values uh, may depend on your uh, test requirements. So the binary input also and the uh, binary output. So this binary output is used to uh, simulate your uh, breaker status. So in state two, uh, we define the uh, name, the weight condition, which is normally your uh, grip output and the time. So we will wait for this uh, contact to close here, the binary input configuration. Uh, if you use the normally open contact, you need to set it from open to close and the breaker should be uh, in close uh, status or in close position. For the reclose time, so we need to configure again the state here. So the weight condition. So we need to use a separate uh, output contact for this uh, uh, state. So in this case, we use the binary input two for the reclose command. And uh, we use the normally open. So we set it from open to close. So when the contact is close, so it will give you the time. So at this point, we need to configure the breaker status also. So the breaker should be open in this uh, state. So we cannot close a uh, breaker when it's still closed. So we need to open it first. So the states from uh, four until to the here, the third shot, so it is only uh, set for uh, three shots, three close. So if you want to check in the lockout or until the release uh, sends a lockout uh, command, you can uh, add more states. And these are some examples of the, the uh, test values. So these values may uh, may change depending on your protection functions that uh, you are testing and the voltage also if you are testing uh, other protection functions which uh, needs a voltage you can uh, put the values here so it depends on uh, the functions you want to test so this is the state sequence so what you need to do first is to check the uh, advanced. You need to go in advanced mode in order to view these uh, binary outputs. 
So after that, after you configure the uh, states, you can uh, go to these uh, timer settings. In the timer settings, you need to configure the start condition and the stop condition. And also, you can put the uh, timer name to identify the uh, to these values. So this will be useful when uh, the time when the time comes to evaluate the results. And uh, this minimum and maximum, you can put these uh, limits based on the uh, published uh, literature of the reclosers you are testing. So number one, set the uh, binary input. Like in this case, we use this binary input one for uh, trip output. And number two, we set the... Uh, uh, binary outputs to simulate the uh, breaker status. So take note that this uh, example here is for testing the controller only. So here we use the uh, binary output of the SMRT to simulate the uh, uh, close position uh, breaker. So next is the uh, weight condition. So we need to select the uh, weight any to continue the test to another state. So when the uh, when the software detects the input change, it will uh, go to the next state. So for this time, no need to define in this uh, time view. So number five, we need to define the test values here for current or maybe for voltage if you need one. And again, for uh, configuring the uh, reclose uh, contact or the reclose uh, state, we put it in, in state three here, for example. We configure the binary input two here. So we use the uh, uh, from open to close. You can see this arrow here. So this arrow here means you are using the normally close contact. So again, we need to set the binary output. Here in binary output, we set it uh, the, the number two or the binary output number two to simulate the 52B contact or the uh, open status of the breaker. Again, so we need to set, set again the weight condition here. And it can be uh, put to zero. So uh, because we are waiting for this uh, feedback from the input, so it doesn't matter. So again, we can uh, define our values here. Since we are simulating an open uh, breaker, so it's obvious that uh, there is no current or there is no voltage. So here we have some uh, example application video. So we'll play the video here. So in our example, we use the NTEC. So this is the nameplate of the uh, recloser. As you can see, the rated current is uh, 630. As we have mentioned, so reclosers are used for uh, uh, low current uh, fault magnitude. So this is the test for the uh, controller. So we have used the uh, adapter having uh, 37 fins 
And the only default uh, pins here in our ARTS is uh, 32 pins. So we get the information from the, uh, the closer manufacturer, the pin assignments, the pin assignments for uh, CTNVT, uh, breaker status, uh, trip output, and uh, reclose command. And we made some uh, customized uh, adapter to fit in here in the reclose uh, in the ARTS. So here, here is the uh, 32 to 37 uh, test cable. Uh, be connected to the control unit. And 32 pin goes to the uh, ERTS uh, control connection here. So you can connect the uh, current, the uh, SMRT to the ERTS. So if you need the voltage, you can also connect the current. So we will only use the, uh, we short this uh, binary outputs to simulate the uh, breaker. Since we cannot test the, uh, with, uh, without uh, breaker status, so we need to temporarily uh, put a looping here. Of the uh, controller to the binary input, of the uh, SMRT. So next, we'll check the settings. So, so, so that we can decide our test currents. So this is very important when you are testing the protection functions. First, you need to do the uh, so that uh, it will be very easy to rerun the test. So here, we use the overcurrent uh, module in the uh, RTMS software. So here in the settings of the overcurrent, this is only for uh, secondary. So we are uh, using a current here reflected in the, in the secondary side. So in our settings, the ratio is uh, 1,000 is to 1, and the settings for the uh, overcurrent is uh, 500. So that's why we put here uh, 0.5 here, the pickup settings. And this is your instantaneous settings, the 3,000. And for the ground settings here, this is your pickup and the uh, instantaneous ground. So for phase timing test, so for phase A, B, phase B, C, and uh, phase C, A, and the uh, three phase for the A, B, C. So this is the result for A, B at uh, two times your uh, settings. So 0.5 times two. So this is your test current, one ampere. And this is your minimum and maximum uh, time or the allowable range. So next is for BC. So also you can uh, check here from the controller measurement. So what is the current? And uh, if you want a record, you can also check in the event logs for uh, for a more detailed uh, values of uh, test currents. So because there is a, some time delay that uh, the controller will display the measured uh, 
values. So it's better to get the uh, event logs. So in the event logs, you can see the magnitude of the currents and the uh, what is the output or all the events that are required for the test. You can review here. It, it, it's very helpful when you are evaluating the uh, results. So we have the test points up to seven times here. So four test points. So you can add more test points. So it depends on your uh, requirements. So after the test, you, you can save the results. And we will go on to the face to ground uh, test for the face to ground element. So the settings for the face to ground is uh, 0 0.2 uh, ampere in secondary. So this is the, mul the current multiple, the two times, three times, uh, five times, and the last one is the eight times. So eight, eight times uh, 0 0.2. So this is the current or the test current. So now we'll do the uh, uh, test for the controller or the auto closing time. Uh, put the wiring here. Yeah. Or prior to testing the closer, we need the breaker status. So we will simulate it. Turn the in previous. You can configure this in the uh, state sequence, and we put in the uh, put. For the oh, sorry, the reclose time. So in order to view this uh, output configuration here. So we need the uh, 10 states here, total 10 states, including the end of states. So you can put the uh, different magnitudes of, of uh, test current in uh, different uh, trip so as you can see here the 50 This uh, uh, value, you can use the uh, formula. I think it is included in the next slide, so we will check it. Auto recloser control to assess if this uh, result you've got is within the uh, allowable uh, limits. So, this is the test report. So, this assessment or this automatic assessment. 
will only appear if you put the uh, limit values here. So if you didn't put anything, it will not uh, put the uh, automatic assessment here. So here, the next step is testing the uh, recloser unit and the control unit simultaneously. So we will connect that uh, cable to the uh, recloser connections of the ERPS. But first thing, we need to use this uh, adapter again. Since uh, it is a 37 pin, we need that adapter to fit in in our ERTS uh, here. We connected here the recloser connection. So you can remove here. Uh, you can remove this uh, connection now since the uh, the recloser unit is connected. It's uh, possible to remove the, that uh, connections going to the SMRT. So now this is the actual test. So you can hear the first sound. Three close to. And the uh, trip again and the close. Waiting to reclose again. Again, this is uh, already end of the uh, successful uh, auto reclose. So now we will check the timing test results. So as you can see here, it's uh, almost the same when you are testing the uh, control unit only. So we only put additional states here. So the results you can uh, view after the uh, test. So that's the end of the uh, video. So now we will go to the results and uh, again check, we can check, we can compare the uh, settings to the measured values that we got from the uh, SMRT. So here comparing the settings and the results, it's very near. So it's only uh, 30 milliseconds difference. So it's within the allowable uh, limits, for example, in this uh, reclose one. So now for the assessment of the overcurrent results, if you want to check, you can use this formula to substitute the test currents here in the numerator, and you can substitute the uh, settings here in the denominator of this. And by using this constant, you can uh, calculate the uh, expected time or the nominal time. So this is our summary. So reclosers uh, minimize the power interruption time. So when we reduce the uh, interruption time, we increase the revenue for the utility company. So restoring system capability and critical system interconnections. So maintain system stability reduces a lot of uh, manpower. So when we reduce manpower, it's possible to run substation unattended and it can improve uh, customer satisfaction. So some testing requirements are required by uh, applicable standards or according to applicable standards. Uh, some testing requirements uh, for acceptance and uh, commissioning or whenever the changes in protection scheme or settings update and during the uh, scheduled maintenance. So thank you. I think this is the end of my presentation.
right. Now here comes to our Q&A session. You can type your questions into the chat box and our panelists will answer them. For those of you who are leaving, please remember to fill in the survey form. You will see it on the right of your screen. We will be sending the presentation materials to those who completed the survey. If you have already completed the survey, you can download the attendance certificate. It is available at the certificate icon at the bottom control panel. So I think we have some question here. Yeah, you may answer it, Bern. Uh, but it is in uh, Filipino. Uh, maybe I can translate it into English. Uh, we have a question here. Is it necessary to uh, set the recloser to four shots? Or is it OK to just set it in two shots? So it depends on your uh, applications or protection schemes. So normally they set it to up to three, three shots or four shots, maybe. So I'm not sure what your uh, applications <laughs> on that are closer. But normally we we set it up to three shots. And I think uh, that's it. And maybe you can add some more, uh, Sir Mike. Yeah, actually, it depends on the sensitivity of the load because some of the loads cannot handle the inrush current or sometimes cannot handle the on and off scenario. So normally, the uh, four shots or three shots is applicable to the area with lots of trees. I mean, uh, in the forest, for example, because normally a lot of transit is happening, especially when a branches when a branch of trees touches the line. So. Yeah, sometimes they do four shots on that area. Uh, but sometimes uh, they don't do that four shots for a critical load or a sensitive load. Uh, and sometimes it depends on the voltage level. So, For example, I think in NGCP, if you are talking of 230 kb, I don't think they, they do uh, reclosing. Okay, and the next question is, what is the model uh, and equipment that Megar has to test the closer? So for for like for example, in secondary, you can use the SMRT forty six or the forty six ten, forty six D, or four ten D for secondary for secondary testing of uh, closer control. For primary, we have the SPI, which you can use for primary current injection for testing the face-to-ground uh, -face or face-to-face -face, uh, uh, function of overcurrent of the closer. And if you want uh, higher currents, you can use our uh, ODEN. So, but that is a lot uh, heavier and uh, more <laughs> more uh, challenging to. Uh, bring at the uh, at the location of your, your of your uh, recloser. So if you have some recloser on your warehouse, maybe it's uh, it's more convenient if you if you want to use that uh, Odin. Yeah. yeah. So if I may add again for the the model that we have or for the items that we have in Megger, uh, remember that Bernard. According to Bernard, uh, we can test the recloser in two ways. Two ways. One is through primary current injection, meaning we are injecting high current into the line in order for the recloser to trip. And the second thing is through secondary injection, which is we are going to inject current on the relay side or on the controller side only. So for the relay side or for the secondary side, we have the SMRT or relay tested with the ERTS, but uh, in case that, you know, the uh, because we have this harness, we have this cable for different brands. Different brands has, have different pin assignments. So if, for example, the brand of your recloser is not included in the list, just let us know so we can customize the cable according to the brand of your recloser. 
Okay, because sometimes uh, it's not available in the list. Most probably you're using China or other brand of uh, closer. Uh, we can customize the cable for you for the secondary voltage inject uh, for the secondary current injection. For the primary, it's not necessary to customize any cable because we are just injecting on the primary side. So we can use the SPI Oden for high current, uh, SPI up to 4,000 ampere, Oden for at, at least 7,000 or more. And we also have trucks, the trucks uh, with the closer application, uh, we can go up to 2,000 amperes. Okay, that is for the primary current injection. So we have other questions here, Bert. Uh, I, I guess we still have time. Is it applicable to Cooper reclosers? For Cooper reclosers, I'm not sure uh, what's the number of pins, but if the Cooper reclosers has uh, 14 pins or 19 pins or 32 pins, it will definitely uh, fit our uh, ERTS and it can be tested. So, but as I discussed before, if the number of pins doesn't fit the default uh, pin configuration in the RTS, we can uh, customize the adapter and uh, it will be possible to test. Correct, correct. Uh, normally, Cooper is a, uh, you know, a major brand, uh, very popular. So I believe it is included in the list of our uh, closers to, to test. Another question here, is this available already? Yes, sir. Uh, it is available in the market already since 2016, yes. I guess. Uh, another question, using this type of test equipment, only qualified personnel can only use this special equipment. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Well, most probably uh, because uh, if you, you if you are not qualified, then we will make you qualified. Okay. Uh, what I mean is that we'll we normally offer free training if you buy uh, this type of equipment. So don't you worry. We will make you qualified. Okay. So I guess that's all the questions that we have for now. If you have any further questions, you may send us email to megerhongkong at megger.com. You can also visit www.megger.com slash webinars for our future webinars. Just a reminder, please complete the survey and download the certificate before you go. A recording of this webinar will be sent to you in two days time by email. And thank you again for attending and we hope to see you again next time. Goodbye. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, Bern. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.